Connected rates of change is something that students find very difficult that actually is not difficult. And I'm not just saying that because I find maths easy. I'm saying it because I've taught lots of students who, once they realise that all the questions are the same, they don't find it difficult. There's a whole heap of words and it sounds really confusing and there's all this stuff going on. But if you can refer back to this triangle all the time, that is the wrong colour for the triangle, this triangle in fact, then um, everything will always be all right. Okay, so what you do is you draw a triangle and you write time at the top and then you read the question. And the question is going to go on and on about some stuff that's happening and it's going to mention the rate of change of things, the rate of change, for example, of a volume or it might be a rate of change of an area or it might be a rate of change or a radius or it might be a length or what else could it be? Width, volume, area, but I can't think of anything else, diameter, this sort of thing. You're going to have two things that are changing as time changes. So for example, we have something spreading out, so like a an ink blot that spreads out and as time goes on, it gets bigger and bigger. So its area is getting bigger and its radius is getting bigger, for example. So you've got time ticking along, time at the top like this. And as this is ticking along, these two things are both changing. With a balloon blowing up, the time is clicking through and the volume is getting bigger and the radius is getting bigger. Or you could call it diameter, whatever it is. So find those two things in the question that are changing with time. They are going to go here and here. So I'll just make one up that it's volume and let's do cube, so width and volume, okay? So you find those two things in the question and you put them here and here on the triangle. Next, you need to form an equation linking these two. Now you might be given it, but you might have to do it yourself. But it's very, very important that we form an equation linking these two. What are they? Things. <laughs> Variables. So for example, with my little cube, if I've, if I've got a cube like this, and this is x, then the volume of that cube is x times x times x. So it's a fairly easy one. And then differentiate that equation. So all this can be done almost before you've read the question, to be honest. dv by dx is 3x squared in my case. All this is you have a quick glance at the question, you work out what two things are changing as time goes along and you put them at the bottom and then you join them up, either they tell you or you work it out and then you differentiate. And then from this point, slight change, now we're going to find out which of these we're told and which we're asked for. So one of them you'll be told, rate of change of volume or the rate at which the water is going in, something like that, or the rate of change of the width. One of them you will be told. So are you told dv by dt, that's the rate of change of the volume, or dw by dt, that's the rate of change of the width. You will definitely be told one of these two, and then whichever one you're told, put it on that side of the, um, of the triangle. So for example, let's say that we're told dw by dt. So the rate of change of the width, the width is increasing at, I don't know, two centimetres per second, something like that. Put this, whichever one you're told, on the triangle. Now, that's basically the end, because if they've told you that side, they're going to ask for this side. And that's the whole point of this triangle, really, is it collects together everything you need to know. They're asking you for the rate of change of the volume, dv by dt. And what we do is, rather than going straight from v to t and getting dv by dt straight off, we're going to go via the width. So we're going to go dv by dw, dw by dt. And that's going to be the same as dv by dt. So we're just using the chain rule again. So once you've got everything on the triangle, it's pretty easy. It's the chain rule. And the chain rule says that dv by dt, or this one if you're not told this one, whichever one you're not told, 
is the same as going round the triangle the other two ways. So that's the same as doing dv by dw times dw by dt. You can think of it as the dw's cancelling, they don't really, but you can think of it like that, like this. So it's dv by dt. And then dv by dw is, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, that is bad. I wrote dx. Oh, x is width. Oh, oh, I need to change my letters. Width is x. So this is dx. I was using x for width and w for width. That's not mathematically good at all. I'm going to stick with x for width. So are we told dv by dt or dx by dt? Uh, chain rule, dv by dt is dv by dx, dx by dt. Apologies, I should stick with one letter to describe each thing and I'm going to use x for the width, not w. Although you could use w if you prefer. So dx by d, dv by dx, which is what we want here, is on this side of the triangle. And you did this, look, all the way up here. You did it already. So it will definitely be there because you definitely did this first section of work. So it's 3x squared dx by dt is this side of the triangle, the rate of change of the width with respect to time, and that's there as well because you put that there, you put it on the triangle at that stage, so you've got that, and then you're done. That's literally it. They're all the same. If you practice, you'll see that this is actually a very easy topic.